The way the NBA draft combine is going means the Pelicans can get a starting center. And I'm going to tell you why that has big implications for a Brandon Ingram trade. It's the Wednesday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans at NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here we go on this Wednesday, and we're going to look at the way the Pelicans are looking at this draft and the way they could move Brain and Ingram are actually really interconnected, and I'm going to explain why. And then we're going to look at a couple of prospects in this draft to keep an eye on because the combine is going really well, in my opinion, for the New Orleans Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are the number one Pelicans podcast coming to you like nobody else does, giving you the coverage you want, getting into some draft stuff too. Don't forget, live show 6 p.m. Wednesday. We'll look at an Atlanta Hawks trade with the New Orleans Pelicans. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. We'll look at both those guys as well as could there be a center involved. But that might be impacted by what we're going to talk about today. And then, of course, in the live show, we'll do a bonus segment where I answer your questions, interact with y'all. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. We are over. 10K, over 10,000 Pelicans fans on the Locked On Pelicans YouTube page as well, which is an awesome thing. I'll work on doing something special and fun for y'all because of that, because that is a massive milestone. But let's get into the trade and draft talk here, because we know the Pelicans are looking like they want to move on from Brandon Ingram. And Mark Stein in his Substack newsletter, which is worth subscribing and paying for, says it's all but like an inevitability is what teams, other teams and executives around the league think. Now, I'm not so sure about that, but he's pretty well connected, talks to a lot of people. So if he thinks it's an inevitability, let's kind of work with that here. So when you're looking at a Brandon Ingram trade, there's two glaring holes on this team that you're trying to fill right now. One of them is the starting center. Jonas Valchunas is a free agent. As far as I'm aware, he's like packing up his house to leave the city. I don't anticipate him coming back. No one really anticipates him coming back. So you need to fill that hole with someone who just ideally fits better alongside Zion Williamson or that your head coach is going to play, right? That was always also a Willie Green thing there too. But if you trade away Brain Ingram, you know, he led the team in assists last year. He can be a good three-point shooter. He can be a scorer. So you need to kind of fill that creation, shooting, scoring, you know, gap that you're going to have there. So you need to try and address both of those. If you trade Ingram, say, just for another guard, say you trade him straight up for Trey Young, you still need to figure out your starting center, and now you're going to you know, lose assets to be able to make that happen. So when you're looking at this, you've got to try and figure out not only what's the best trade in terms of value for Brandon Ingram, but how is it going to impact the rest of the roster and filling out the rest of it, right? Say you trade Ingram straight up for Jared Allen, and that doesn't feel right to me. You know, but you don't get someone to kind of totally plug that hole for Jared Allen. That, or sorry, for Brain Ingram, it could be Trey Murphy. I would assume then he'd be the natural person to start. But if you still need creation, which is not what Trey does, you have Zion certainly, but we've learned CJ in that role, CJ McCollum, isn't really the best. You know, Herb Jones can handle the ball, but that doesn't give you creation for others. So you need to find that elsewhere. And now all of a sudden you can't do it. And I don't think this draft is particularly great to be able to try and go kind of fill that. So you're you, if you trade him away, you've got to kind of then plan your next move out. And this is, you know, the challenge, I think, for the front office when it comes to some of this stuff is figuring out exactly how you kind of balance all of the moving pieces. Certainly, you want to get the best return on Brian Ingram that you possibly can. 
But at the same point, you need things that are going to kind of fill your roster out and do the right thing. Or maybe it's just easier to completely re-sign him, which I still think, even if it's not at a max, is maybe, you know, if there's somehow a team-friendly deal in there, something that is worth looking at. Though I can't really see Brian Ingram agreeing to take you know, like significantly less than the max here. But given that Ingram's value is, let's say, at an all-time low, and it feels like it could be, this isn't a great position at times for the Pelicans to be in. So you've got to figure out what do you need the most out of a Brandon Ingram trade? Is it value, right? Is it a starting center? Is it creation, shooting, something like that? Someone that's going to take threes because Ingram hasn't even though I do think he kind of is aware that maybe he needs to and needs to do some self-reflection on why this season went as poorly for him as it did. But here's where the good news is. You know, you're not in a rush, let's say, to trade Brandon Ingram. This draft and having picks in it, like, eh, that's just kind of an eh draft, right? Like, a draft pick in this might not be the sort of thing that is as important to other teams as the player, let's say. So you can get a deal done after the draft, let's say, for Brandon Ingram and other pieces in there, if that's what you need to, and draft a starting center. And I think if you're in New Orleans, that's maybe what you're looking to do. And more on this in a second here, because the combine is looking pretty good for big men right in the Pelicans draft range. They could have the 17th pick if you if they want it. More on that in a show later in the week, by the way. And the Lakers had coaching search and how that might impact that, by the way, because I think those two things could be linked a little bit. You know, you could have the 17th pick. You have the 21st pick right now. You know, you could get us, I think, a starting center there. Think the, about the impact that Derek Lively the second had for the Dallas Mavericks. And we talked a little bit about it the other day on the show here. That, I think, is a very valuable and realistic option for New Orleans. And if you can get your starting center, that means then you can trade Brandon Ingram for Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, you know, uh, some, maybe a package with the Jazz, a package with the Cavaliers that doesn't involve Jared Allen. You can go and do that sort of thing all of a sudden, and that opens up a different world of possibilities and lessens that balancing act a little bit. It also might mean you don't look to make a deal with the Detroit Pistons, but maybe you do, and more on that in the third segment, because if you trade Ingram and the 21st pick for Jalen Duran's salary filler in the fifth pick, well, okay, you've got your starting center, but then what? What do you do with that fifth pick? Though there's some options we'll talk about, kind of trade up options a little bit coming up here later in the show. But I think it does put the Pelicans in a good position to know what they need to trade Brandon Ingram for. Or you can just trade Brandon Ingram now, know you're going to draft a starting center at 21 and just make it happen because there's going to be four or five guys there in that range that I think are realistic options that would be good enough for New Orleans. So let's look at some of those names and how they're faring at the combine because a lot of these guys are grading out really well, like surprisingly well. And I think that provides a clear picture of trading Brain Ingram for not a center and something else. So that's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by BetterHelp. Look, we all have a lot of stressors in our life, big, small, and when you keep them bottled up, it can start to really affect you in negative ways. So therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest, to figure out how to work through whatever it is that is weighing you down. I've used therapy a lot. Life doesn't come with an instruction manual. Sometimes you just need some help, someone who's neutral that you can talk to and try and work through some things. Not like your friends are great, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you just need that neutral third party that's trained and experienced with this sort of thing. And I've used BetterHelp. I love it because what's great about it is it's entirely online. I'll have time to get in a car, drive, wait in an office, then go in and see someone, then drive home. Too much going on in my life. I can just hop online and you have your session. And I come away feeling significantly better. So BetterHelp is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And all you do is just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So get things off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA. 
And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over, I get to say that now, 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. We are going to do the community mock draft again this year. A number of you all have put your names out there. The link is in the description down below. I've also pinned the comment to this YouTube show as well. It's a lot of fun. We need to get like 25 of y'all in there. We got a bunch of names so far. So keep signing up. If you're interested, you'll get assigned a team and then you just make the pick. I'll let you know when it's really easy to do. And that's it. No trades, anything like that. Just make your pick. And then you give me like a sentence or two. Why? And it's really that simple. So sign up with the Google Forms link that I have. Now, for your second listen, or just your everyday listening, stop watching Fox Sports ESPN, where they yell all day long and don't really give you anything of value. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels at part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. So let's let's get into some names with the draft because I've been watching the draft combine. I've been talking to a lot of our folks that I know are there and a couple of others as well. And getting just kind of feedback and insight onto what's going on. We're going to throw out a lot of names at you here. So if you're looking at 17 or 21, you know, it's a five pick range or so there. I think that one of these names will be available at the 21st overall pick. And I think the Pelicans would be fine with any of these guys. And this is not necessarily in order out of the first one. The first name that I want to throw out here is Eves Missy from Baylor, a freshman. He, I think, is probably the ideal guy for this team. His measurements were great, just absolutely through the roof here. He's a seven-footer that is a lob threat and that vertical spacing guy that gives you shot blocking that you're looking for. He is just an athletic freak that gets out there and hustles and showing off a little bit of a jump or two during some of this. But he's the guy I think that just you could get, could plug right into the starting lineup. Is not a court spacer per se? Not the best kind of creator for others, but that's kind of the brilliance about this, right? If you trade Brain Ingram for Trey Young, for DeJounte Murray, for Donovan Mitchell, something like that, right? Zion's your number one. That guy's your number two. CJ is your three. Then you have maybe Trey Young or Herb Jones as your next option. The starting center doesn't need to do it all. They just need to be competent enough. You don't need a guy that's going to facilitate a ton. You don't need an elite. An elite shooter would be good. You need that. But you get what I'm saying. As long as they're good enough to kind of do what the team wants to do defensively, give you some rim protection, this team is in a really good spot when it comes to drafting a guy and at least having them be impactful. Now, Missy, I think, is a guy who can definitely do that. He's going to protect the paint for you. He's also going to give you rebounding. He's going to be that lob threat that I want to kind of see with Zion Williamson there. And he's just got a very strong leap ability. I don't think he's going to be there. I think this is a guy whose physical attributes is going to just vault him up the draft board, but I think he's kind of the ideal guy. Two of the names that I think one of them will be there at 21 for New Orleans. The first one is Kellel Ware out of Indiana. He is a sophomore. He shows a lot of promise. There's a lot of promise here with him. The athleticism is good. He's a rim protector as well, and he has upside to be a floor spacer. His shot looks pretty clean. He's not going to be a threat that teams are going to shade their coverage on and like make sure they're defending him on the three-point line, but he's definitely someone that could burn other teams when that's the case. He gives you interior scoring as well, which you don't particularly need a lot from when it comes to this team, but it doesn't hurt things, that's for sure. He's a guy with really good size too. His measurables were really good at the combine the other day too. He's seven foot. He moves very well side to side. So you could have him switch out there on the perimeter. You know, he has just, he's a really like springy guy. That's like the best word that I I can use with some of these big men, right? They just get up and that's going to make him really good in the pick and roll too, which I'd like to see more of in this Pelicans offense. So Kellel Ware is a guy that I think is going to be a big option for the Pelicans. He has one big flaw that just jumps 
out at you when you look at him. And that's his lack of motor. It, it, it's got to be one of the worst out of all the big men out there. Like he just doesn't have that effort, that focus a lot. And I talked to someone who was there at the combine about him because he's someone that I'm, I, I'm really interested in. And that was their big concern, like everything else with him, but they wouldn't draft him because that lack of motor. Now he's the fifth guy on this team. Does he need to have the highest motor? Maybe not, but you'd like to see that, I think. But he's also not a great screener either, they said. And so you've got to look at kind of the pluses and minuses. But would he be enough for 20 to 25 minutes? Probably. And with that size and the shot blocking, I think that could be a really big thing for this team as well and kind of what they are looking for when it comes to that. You also have a guy that I think is going to be available, and that's Kyle Filipowski, the sophomore out of Duke. Again, a seven-footer who moves side to side better than what we thought during a lot of the agility drills at the combine. He's a pretty good ball handler, which means he's going to kind of fit right into moving the ball around a little bit more, I think. You know, he's a good screener. He's a good cutter. This is what you kind of want in this starting center for the Pelicans here, who's your fifth option on offense. That's kind of the most important thing. He's a little bit turnover prone and that's not an ideal situation, but he's good in the pick and roll. He's got good size to give you that shot blocking and he has upside of being a very good perimeter shooter as well. Everyone seems to think, even though it hasn't truly developed that there's something there. And one of the things we've seen is the Pelicans feel they can develop three point shooting, whether it's Dyson Daniels, whether it's Herb Jones, those are guys that they've tried to kind of bring along as three point shooters. I wouldn't be shocked if they try and do the same thing with Kyle Filipowski or where as well. But those are two names that I think are realistically going to be there for the Pelicans at 21. And is that a guy that can just slot right in, be your fifth starter Absolutely, even with that motor concern for where. There's also a guy that I think is kind of flying under the radar here a little bit, and it has to do with his size in terms of height. And that's um, Deron, Deron Holmes, the second out of Dayton. This is like a, a, a small, like think, think Larry Nance Jr. because he's only 6'9", but with way more athleticism. He's a shot blocker. He can get up and throw down the ball on lobs. He's going to be able to switch on the perimeter. And that's what you're really looking for when it comes to him, right? You know, he shot well from three last year. We'll go into all these guys in greater detail more. We'll have like more episodes about them. But this is a guy that I think, you know, despite his lack of size, the wingspan's there. 7-1 wingspan. So even if you're a little bit shorter, as long as your arms are up there, that's all that matters. And he really has that. And this is a guy that I think could be a starting center eventually for you, even if he maybe looks more like an elite, elite power forward, something like that. But it's definitely an option for the Pelicans there as well, depending on how this shakes out a little bit. There's a couple other names, though, that I want to look at. And one of them is Zach Eady from Purdue. His measurables at the combine have looked real good, but I have concerns about his fit. And here's the other thing. I think you're gonna have to trade up to get him. Plus a couple of other trade up targets that we need to keep an eye on. One that I think is trending in the right way that the Pelicans, I can already tell you, absolutely love. And another whose combine actually hurt him. And could that change the way we look at this draft? That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by GameTime. This is my go-to ticketing app. And I love it because buying tickets, there's so much uncertainty. Are you getting a good deal? Should I buy them now? Should I wait? What if you're going to a place you've never been? Are the seats good? Can you see? Is it the view that you want? GameTime takes the uncertainty out of all of that. And GameTime is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which means that if you're going to any of the other playoff games here, you can get it even faster and easier. And prices on the GameTime app often go down the closer it gets to tip off. But that's okay because they have the GameTime guarantee. So GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. So you can buy it anytime or just wait and all of a sudden realize, hey, that's the price that I want. I'm going to go to the game or the concert or the comedy show or the theater production. 
any of those things, Game Time is going to be able to do. So Game Time can save you up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And they even have flash deals within the app. And that's always great on select seats to give you even more of a deal. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NBA, L O C K E D O N NBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost over. It's almost. That was bad. We're over. Over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. So. Let's keep talking about the draft here. By the way, your second listen, Locked on Saints, Ross Jackson, making sense of everything black and gold, going to rookie mini camps. He just took a tour of the new facility, and there's upgrades coming to the Pels, too. He's got the insight on all of this here. So let's look at a couple of other targets in terms of trading up, because I think there's some guys that look good for New Orleans, but probably not in the sense that that's the move to do to get your starting center. So one of them is Zach Eady, Purdue, senior. Like, we, we know who this dude is. He's 7'3". He's insane. The production that he's had through the roof, right? He was great in college, one of the most productive players. He can score inside. He's as big and tall and massive of a center as you can get. And that's useful, right? Like, he can score down low. Like, you definitely see some like shades of Jonas Valanciunas with him, right? But I just don't see this. And it's for two reasons. He's not a shooter. There's like no perimeter game whatsoever. Like whatsoever. And while yes, he gives you rim protection, he can't switch on the perimeter either. And I just don't see how he fits. His measurables and the mobility drills that he did, the agility drills, he tested better than we were expecting that really anyone was expecting. And for a big man that can move like that, oh boy, is that really intriguing. So if all of these other guys are off the off the board, maybe that's what you end up d- doing is drafting him. But here's the thing. From what I understand from a couple of people that I've talked to, I don't think he's even going to be there at 17. I think he's going to end up getting taken a little bit higher. So you'd need to trade up to try and get him. And I just don't think that that's the right use of assets for new Orleans. I think there are some guys they would like to trade up for, but I don't think Edie is one of them whatsoever. Another guy that I thought could have been a trade up opportunity. And then just the measurables came back that give me like big pause, big concern. And the first, the, the main one, when it comes to that is Rob Dillingham from Kentucky freshman, Kentucky guards do well in the NBA. Like they just do well in the NBA and there's something to be said for that. You know, he's a shifty backcourt player that can go out and score. He's a pull-up threat. He can shoot and move. He can move and shoot and he's a good ball handler. And they, you know, if you want a kind of future point guard, Dillingham can definitely do that and also be a scorer. Like he's a good catch and shoot guy. He's short though. He's short. He's short. He's short. He's six one, and he measured real poorly in that and that's what concerns me at six foot one and not a good defender can you just go with that kind of short backcourt and I'm really not sure that this Pelicans team wants to do that you know say you know it's a concern with Trey Young but Dillingham's not as good of a scorer as Trey Young right there's ways to kind of outweigh that and Trey Young has proven it Dillingham hasn't and I wonder if that combine measurements kind of hurt his draft stock at least a little bit here. You know, another guy that I think you could trade up to try and get that sounds really great in theory for the New Orleans Pelicans, right, is Donovan Klingham from UConn. And, you know, you you see it, right? 7-2 with like a 7-8 wingspan here that gives you that defense, the shot blocking. And he even has a three-pointer, right? He did some well in the shooting drills here, but he's not a court spacer. When you watch him play, when you watch how slow that shot is in everything, he's just not a court spacer. So 
if you're doing a trade with the Detroit Pistons where you get the fifth overall pick and he could be available, is that you want? You know, are you looking for Jalen Duran and Donovan Klingon? Like, I'm not sure if that's the way to go here and end up drafting this guy. Like, two kind of using turning Brandon and Brandon Ingram into two centers doesn't really seem like the best way to go about this. So, I wonder if this is maybe changing the Pelicans' mind of a potential Brandon Ingram trade here, at least to Detroit. Because I like a lot of these other centers and players that are available elsewhere. You know, one other name I want to keep an eye on as a trade-up target here. Because when you watch him in the combine and watch a lot of his college stuff, oh, you, you see a player the Pelicans like. You see a player the Pelicans like. And that's Dalton Connect, uh, Tennessee senior, um, playing on the wing. He's six foot six with a pretty good wingspan. He's older. He's a senior, right? He's going to be thirty-four or not thirty-four? Who? 24 next season, but this is about as good of a three-point shooter as you've seen here. He can do it on movement too. He's a pull-up threat, and he's not afraid to take shots. There's a lot of fearlessness to him in all of this, and I just like everything you see, but here's the thing. He's a high flyer too. This is a guy that Tennessee ran a lot of lob plays for. He can get up. That's you know a cutter that shoots threes that just works well off ball like that, doesn't need the ball in his hands. And he's a pretty good enough defender, not the best on-ball defender, but off-ball, he moves around, he stays with his man, he doesn't get lost. That seems to me to scream a player that the Pelicans would really like, and I think that's a name that you need to really try and keep an eye on in this draft should they look to trade up. I don't know if you, I don't really think you could trade 17 and 21 to trade up. I, you, maybe you should try to do that, but I don't know if that's really going to be an option here. But just a name to keep an eye on because I think this is a guy that the team would really, really like here. But I think you're looking at Missy, Ware, Holmes, Filipowski, somewhere with that 21, uh, 21st pick that the Pelicans have. Is that a, someone in that range that you want the Pelicans to be starting? Do you want Edie? Do you want him to trade up and get Klingon? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But I do think with a lot of center options, big men options available to the Pelicans in this draft, seeing what Derek Lively the second did for the Dallas Mavericks last year, the Pelicans might decide to go that way. And that kind of changes how you view a brain and Ingram trade and what you're looking for in return. Let me know what you think. So tonight, live show, 6 p.m. Central on Wednesday, depending on when you're listening to this. Live on YouTube, we'll do a bonus segment where I interact with y'all, answer your questions after the fact as well. I'm looking forward to it. We'll look at Trey Young. We'll look at DeJounte Murray and other pieces because there's a couple of other interesting pieces from the Atlanta Hawks too to try and get a deal done around Brandon Ingram and then your questions. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll see y'all later for the live show.